Hi, I'm Mark with Crown & Caliber, and welcome to Hidden Gems. There are watches out there that are marvels of engineering. They're a testament to their point in time, but when you see them, they look unassuming. They look plain. They look like a very nice watch, but they simplicity betrays everything that's going on. And this Blancpain Villaray 1185 is a perfect example of that. You first see it, and it's a very nice chronograph. It's beautiful, but it doesn't give you the sense of the engineering behind it, the point in time it demonstrates. There's a lot going on in this watch, so let's get into it. To understand this watch, I think we need to go back, back to the quartz crisis, where quartz watches became the new thing. Swiss watchmaking was going away as everyone was getting the new Seiko quartz or the new Timex quartz. They weren't going for the Swiss luxury brand. But there was one guy who bet against it, and it's really important to know about him, Jean-Claude Biver. He started off at Audemars Piguet, went to Omega, and then while there he decided, I'm gonna start my own brand. And he revitalized a brand that did not survive the quartz crisis, which is Blancpain. Him and the owner, Frederic Piguet, got together, bought the rights, and the important part that they did is they said, we're not going to do what everyone else does. We're gonna swim against the grain. We're gonna bet that mechanical watchmaking is an art, and that art is eternal. It will forever last. So they're going to create new watches and new movements and keep the mechanical watchmaking spirit alive. In doing so, when they came out with their first watches in 1983, the same year that the Swatch was released, the quartz watch that helped the Swiss watch industry survive, they came out with their first watches and said, since 1735, Blancpain has never made a quartz watch and never will. And that was a statement. And a statement that says, we're going to take this and we're going to keep it growing. They took mechanical watchmaking, they made it a luxury, they made it an art. And that's the first part of what made this brand so special. The second part about this watch is the movement side of it. Chronographs in general are very complicated. And there are simpler ones that are lever, more complicated ones that are column wheel. The best but hardest to make is a vertical clutch column wheel chronograph. And that's what this is. And it's special because most chronograph movements, when you turn them on, rob power from the movement. And if you let them run the entire time, it makes them less accurate. A vertical clutch column wheel is meant to be run. You can let it run all day long. It's always running anyways. So let it go, it's good. But that requires more. It requires more engineering. It requires more to make. And when they made this movement, they didn't just make a vertical clutch column wheel movement. They made the world's thinnest chronograph movement, period, regardless of how you construct it. And that's something. It is also the thinnest one for 32 years, with only one, the Bulgari Octo Finissimo, becoming thinner afterwards. The movement is so good, so well constructed, and so thin, that it is the one that Anamar Piguet said, finally, we can make a chronograph out of our Royal Oak using this movement. It's when Vacheron Constantin said, finally, we can make an overseas as a chronograph with this movement. It's good enough for the best. And it's one where Breguet uses it in the Marine, everybody in the high-end watchmaking wants this movement because of how good it is, how modern it is, and how thin it is. All of that was put in in the 80s, when quartz watches was becoming the thing, when Swatch was becoming the thing that saved the Swiss watch industry. They made this, took it, and put in a 34 millimeter watch and said, yeah, you have that, but look what we have. Cool battery, we made this. That's a testament to what Blancpain was doing and what this watch represents. I think another thing worth mentioning is this watch, when it came out, was marketed towards women. And what they didn't do was shrink and pink it. They didn't make it smaller, put diamonds on it, make it a quartz movement and say, good enough. Instead, they put the full weight of their engineering into it. And they made a very good watch that should be very well respected 
and appreciated who was going to buy it and said, even if you're not who the watch market targets all the time, we're going to respect you. We're going to give you the full weight of what we do. We're going to throw the best engineering we have, the best movement we have. Because we can't, we have it, so let's do it for all those reasons. It represents the history of mechanical watchmaking's revitalization with a movement that is so good, everybody wanted it in high-end watchmaking. And on top of that, it was also a women's watch eventually that respected the owner of those. And for all those things, this watch represents a lot in a little package that gets overlooked. And that's why it's a hidden gem. Thank you for joining me as we learn some great history about watches and engineering. I hope you join me next time on Hidden Gems.